hope and what I get to do day in and day out with athletes and programs across the country from small schools that have 30 athletes to national championship programs across the country. What I get to do day in and day out is help athletes connect the dots between sports and life. Because what I believe with all of my heart is that everything you need to know to be successful in the game of life, you can learn through the game of sports. And it doesn't matter where you want to go or who you want to become. It really doesn't matter where your there is that you can learn to be successful when you get there by learning how to be successful while you are here. And that's because what you learn through the game of baseball is more than just how to catch a ball or hit a ball or field a ball. That those short shelf life skill set, those things that are measurable by a clock on the scoreboard, make no mistake, they matter, right? We want to compete. We want to win. Anybody like to win? I love to win. I slam dunk on my 10-year-old so much. That's how much I love to win. I, I'm all about it. And I want you to want to win. And I want you to have great numbers and great talent. But more than having great talent, I want you to have a great character. Let me put it to you like this. Never let your talent outrun your character that as great and as big and as strong as you build your talent, build your character to be even stronger. And you can do it through the game of baseball. Because through the game of baseball, we learn how to fail and bounce back up. Through the game of baseball, we learn about discipline, doing what you don't want to do today so you can do what you want tomorrow. Through the game of baseball, we learn about integrity, being a man of your word doing what you say you will do. You learn about making commitments that count. Anybody can make a commitment when the motivation is high and the cost is low, but only one of integrity will keep their commitments when the cost is high and the motivation is low. The things we learn through the game of baseball, through coaches who care to invest and to go beyond the game, will set us up for the rest of your life if you will choose. See, my mission, this drive for me to help you connect the dots between sports and life, it comes from this sense of, of understanding that championship people win championships. And I believe in you enough, and I want for you to win championships, not just in the game, but in the game of life. But that to do that, it begins not with how fast you can throw a ball or how fast you can run to first base. It begins with who you are right here. In fact, just about two months ago, I was at Clemson University. Coach Dabo Sweeney called and asked for me to come to speak to the football team during fall camp. And as I was there sharing almost the identical message that I'm sharing with you tonight, I said, championship people win championships. And afterwards, he said, Mackie, we love that language. We say better people make better tigers. But at the, at the heart of it is the sense that the greater your character, the stronger that foundation, the more talent it can hold. You don't have a foundation of great character. You have a million dollars worth of talent and a $10 crap character. Then what happens is all of that talent crushes the weight of your poor foundation. We see it all the time. Guys have once in a generation talent, but a crap character. What happens? They get disqualified. They get kicked out. They say, we don't care how good you are on the field because we can't trust you when you get off of it. And I don't want you to be disqualified. I want more for you than that. That your goals, your dreams, though you're not entitled to them, they're available to you if you choose to do the work. Not just the work, let's face it, the easier work of getting good at the game of baseball. But if you choose to do the harder work of becoming a man of great character. I want you to hear that. It will be easier to be good at baseball than it will to be a man of great character. hard work. It's working hard at the hard work that pays the biggest dividends. Anybody can be good at a kid's game. But to be a man of character, that takes something to do. In my mission in life, as much as I want you to be great at baseball, I want you to be great in the game of life. And so as we talk about what does that look like, I want to share with you tonight what I call the six pillars of a championship character. The six pillars of a championship character. And as we talk about these, what I want you to see is that not only will these things set you up for the one day, but they'll set you up to be better in the game of baseball right now. You see, a developed character is a talent amplifier. 
the stronger, the better your character, the more it will amplify your talent. The longer it will last after you stop playing the game, whenever that day comes. And it sets you up to work through the storms of life and find success wherever you go. So let's talk about the six pillars of a character, of a championship character. You guys have your phones on you? All right, take your phones out. All right, take your phones out, text your mom, or open up a note app, whatever you got to do. Open up pages, send a text message, whatever you got. And I want you to write these down as we talk about it. The six pillars of a championship character. Number one, tough people win. Tough people win. Number two, integrity over everything. I want you to write them down so we don't forget them. Number three, growth follows belief. Four, excellence everywhere. Number five, relentless effort. And number six, service before self. I'll say them again to make sure you have them. Tough people win. Integrity over everything. Growth follows belief. Excellence everywhere. Relentless effort and service before self. If you're sitting next to a friend that doesn't have his phone, you can get his number and text it to him after we're done. As we talk through these, I'm going to encourage you to continue to take notes because as long of a day as this has been, it'll be easy to forget. In one ear, fired up, out the other, we've, we've, we've moved on to dinner. All right? You take notes, short pencils are better than long memory. So take notes on these things as we go. All right? Number one, tough people win. When we talk about toughness, what I don't mean is that you're bigger and badder than John Wayne. Grab a rattlesnake by the tail, pop his head off, just do some crazy West Texas stuff. That's not what I'm talking when I mean toughness. When I say toughness, and if that produces winners, I mean that you are tough enough to know your value and your worth. That you know just how valuable you and your life are. Not because of your talent, but because there's breath in your lungs. I want you to hear this, fellas, eyes on me, because it's tough to catch this. Your value and worth is not found in who you are as a baseball player. Your value and worth is not found in your performance as a base. I could not care two rips about how good a baseball player you are. That is not where your value and worth is found. Your value and worth is found in the fact that there's breath in your lungs. That you're here. That you were put on this earth, created on purpose and for a purpose. Do you get to exercise that purpose through baseball? Sure. But is baseball your purpose? Not at all. You are more than that. And when you get that, all of a sudden what happens is now the threat of poor performance on the field doesn't derail you. How many of you have been in a slump before? Had a bad game. Things didn't go right. All right? And you walked in and you were feeling high. Like, hey, man, I, I got the New Balance giddy up gear. All right, I got my, I got my look good, play good. All right, I'm feeling high. Everybody's here and I'm on the team. And then all of a sudden, that first at bat, somebody throws some stinky cheese that you didn't see coming. And then in your mind, you do this whoosh. Anybody been there? Or am I just making it up? And then maybe you have a good play to fit and you just ride this roller coaster. And one moment you're feeling great, the next moment you're, you're basking. Anybody been there? Nod your head if you're with me. Yes. Okay. You see, when we think my value and worth is found in how well I play, to not play well becomes a threat to your identity. Man, Mom, Dad, they're only going to love me. They're only going to support me if I play well. If I play bad, I'm going to get an earful the whole time. And you have one bad at bat, and you're already in the car ride home getting the, the earful. And it's psyched you. Anybody been there? Yep. Side note, mom and dad, let me, let me help you help your kid. All right? Three things you need to say to your sons after they're done playing. Three things and three things alone. Number one, I love you. From the bottom of my heart, with all of the fullness of who I, I love you. I'm proud of you. And I love to watch you play. They don't need anything else. There's enough pressure on them that they've put on themselves. They don't need more pressure from you. They need encouragement from you. They need support from you. That's what they need. Not, not another earful. That's a side note for another day. I know y'all don't do that, but I, it happens sometimes. That 
when we realize you are worth the work. And when you play poorly, you go, hey, I don't, I'm not going to psych myself out because this isn't a threat to me. My value is not found in this. I am worth working hard, so I'm just going to keep working hard, not because I'm trying to shame myself into growth, but just because I know I'm worth it. That's tough. That's hard. But the moment you realize that you're worth the work, it changes everything. Now, do you still work hard on the field? Absolutely. Do you still push through and battle through? Absolutely. It makes you better there, but you're not trying to shame yourself into growth. Fellas, you'll never shame yourself into growth. Anybody cuss themselves out when they have a bad at bat, make an error in the field? Man, you stupid son. Anybody? Yeah, the worst language you use is the language you use to cuss yourself out, to try to shame yourself into growth. You'll never shame yourself into growth. If you want to grow through the struggles on the field, then treat yourself like you're worth something, including in the way that you talk to yourself. Hey, man, listen, you step up, you go, man, hey, every time, every time I see this pitch, every time I see this pitch, I mess it up. Every time I mess up, break my, I always mess that up. You start cussing yourself out, putting yourself down, and trying to psych yourself up to get it right. Go, Wait a minute, I'm worth this. You go, you know what? Hey, man, I'm worth doing the work, so when I work on this, then I'm going to be one of the best hitters in the game because I'm worth that work. So you know what? Let's go. Changes it once you know the value and the worth that you have. When you begin to play for and live for something bigger than me, myself, and I. Whether that's your faith tradition, your family tradition, whether that's the core values of your team or your program, play for and live for something bigger than yourself. Because once you realize you're playing for something bigger, you get tougher. I think about my kids. Man, I, I stormed the gates of hell with the Super Soaker 9000 for my kids because they're worth it to me. When you know that you are worth it, you'll do whatever it takes to protect and to achieve your goal. Right? That's number one. Tough people win. Know your value and know your worth. And it's not found in the game of baseball. Number two, integrity over everything. Integrity over everything. That you would choose to do the harder right over the easier wrong. And I'm convinced the measure of a person is not... The measure of a man is not how much money they make, how, how high up they played, got drafted, got ranked, the size of the truck they drive. All that stuff, that could be taken away like that. Get you a big fancy house, could be taken like that. Drive you a big jacked up F-350 Dooley, four-wheel drive, with the AC in the seats, with the all-terrain tires, and a custom bumper guard. Yeah, you drive the big rig, but guess what? Be taken like that. Influence could be taken. Like that. Draft position. You got drafted number one. Injury comes along. Baseball. Take it like that. Hope it never happens to you, but it can. One thing that can never be taken is your integrity. If you don't have integrity, it's not because somebody snatched it up from you. It's because you chose to give it away. You got to understand when it comes to your character, you're the most powerful person in your world. Nobody chooses integrity for you. Nobody can choose right for you. Nobody can keep your word for you. That's a choice only you can make. And as simple and silly as it sounds, you tell me what kind of teammates you want. I'm willing to bet if we just threw in, a, if we had a teammate generator, Elon Musk created some machine that would create the perfect teammate, and we started putting in inputs, we would say things like, I want a teammate that's trustworthy, dependable, hardworking, does what he says he'll do, sacrifice, service, positive, encourage. That's all character. Take zero talent for it. But all those things, we understand, make your talent better. If things like integrity can make you a better teammate in a game, how much more so will integrity set you up in the game of life? And one day when you convince some little Chiquita banana to fall in love with you, even though y'all got whatever it is y'all got going on, right? So we got a bullet like we're in 1980. I mean, I don't even know what's happening. Right here, like, and look, honestly, I'm just jealous, okay? Because this, I can't even, like, that's really what it is, all right? I'm just jealous. I see a few folks got the same barber I got, all right? Uh, some by choice, some not. Anyway, when you fall in love, when you start your family, whatever that family looks like, you've got to understand what will make that marriage last is not money. It's not, it's not your good looks. It's not a job. It's what's here. 
are trustworthy. Think about the responsibility. You would be trusted. You trusted with the heart of another. What a gift. And you can get integrity reps right here in the game of baseball. You get integrity reps right here. Reps that set you up so that one day, one day, you have a character that is strong enough to hold the weight of your responsibility. A simple character rep, all right? How many of you, just be honest with you, I ain't trying to get in your business. How many of you, you set an alarm clock in the morning? You got about four or five alarms. It's six o'clock, 6.05, 6.08, 6.07. Raise your hand if that's you. Mom, dad, don't lie. All right, that's some of y'all. We're right there, all right? And it's, and it's like, hey, I'm going to wake up at six. And you got all these alarms. You hit the snooze button. You don't really get any extra sleep, do you? Because between the snooze alarms and the extra alarms, you're just constantly turning the alarm off. And then... Supposed to be up at 6, 6.30 rolls around. you got to be out the door at 6.35, and you're rushing. Anybody been there? Simple integrity rep right here. Next time you go to wake up in the morning, tomorrow morning, set one alarm. Tell yourself, I'm going to wake up at 6 o'clock or 6.30 or whatever your time is. One alarm, and wake up when you say you will. Silly and simple as that sounds, it's stinking hard. That's why all you got 13 alarms on but just imagine that one simple rep, what it does here and what it does here to say, I did what I said I would do. I looked myself in the eyes and said, I'm going to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. 6 o'clock rolled around, I woke up. I got out of bed. That's one rep. What you get great, what you get reps at, you get great at. You go, Matt, what does that have to do with me? If I can't trust you to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, how can I trust you out here? If I can't trust you when you're not being praised, why would I trust you when you're getting praised? If I can't trust you with something that simple, what happens when business and life is a simple rep that sets you up? One choice that makes all of us integrity over everything. Number three, growth follows belief. So what you allow in your here travels the 18 inches from your here to your heart, takes root in your heart, and comes to life in your hands. What you believe determines what grows. You start with yes, you'll find all the reasons you can do something. Start with no, you'll find all the reasons that you can't. It's why how you talk to yourself is so important. It's why the language you use is so important. Because what you talk about is evidence of what you believe. And what you believe determines what grows. You see, once you start believing, once you start believing that you belong out here, then you start acting like you belong out here. And there. There, and what comes out of your action is the growth that looks like the person that belongs out here. I remember five years ago, January 12, 2017, I, I volunteered doing what I'm doing with you all for seven years. I was a volunteer at the local high school where I lived, and a friend of mine said, Mac, I think you can make a living doing this. And I said, James, I give seven-minute talks before football games. You don't make a living doing that. And he said, don't start with no. Start with yes. If you knew it would work. What would you do? Growth follows belief. So if I knew it would work, I'd make an online curriculum, seven to ten minute videos. I'd make an online workbook with lessons for coaches and captains, athletes and the family. I'd make 36 lessons a year, new lessons every year so I could grow and be the player development coach for every high school in the state of Texas. Have I ever done this? No. Did I have a business degree? No. I majored in like Frisbee at Texas A&M, all right? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> thanks to Giga, my degree, recreation, park, and tourism science. That was my degree. We played kickball. The skinny guys did slack line, set up camping tents. I carried the ruck. We threw the Frisbee. That's what we did. No business experience, but I believe. But did my belief alone build a business? Sitting in my garage, pouring some queso in the belly button, dipping some Cheetos in it. You know, I really believe that I'm going to have a great business one day. No. But the belief fueled action. And the action, day in and day out, early in the morning, noon, late at night, when I didn't feel like it. I had set a standard in my mind. And rather than working to my feelings, I worked to my standard. When I said, I don't feel like waking up this morning. I said, I don't care about, my goals don't care about what I feel. They care about whether or not I live to the standard. And I began to do the work day in and day out. I said, if I could get 30 schools by August, that'd be pretty cool. 30 schools, I hit in August. And then 100 schools, then 200 schools. And today, y'all, I'm telling you, we serve over 1,000 campuses in the state of Texas alone, 750,000 student athletes and coaches every week watch our curriculum and our lessons. It's happening five 
five years, we're one of the top 100 fastest growing Aggie-owned companies in the world. But it wasn't simply because I believe the belief started it. The action came from the belief, and then growth followed. What does that matter for you? You have dreams to be out here, to be playing in a place like this. Believe that you are worth it. And then begin to do the work day in and day out, even when you don't feel like it, that that belief would fuel growth. All right? Number, growth follows belief. Number four, tough people win, integrity over everything, growth follows belief, excellence everywhere. Excellence everywhere. The excellence is not perfection. You hear me? Excellence is not perfection. Perfection. But excellence is a product of preparation and effort by your integrity. That when you get out, there are days where you wake up and man, you just a six out of ten. Like you wake up having a bad hair day, little brother ate all the marshmallows at your lucky charms, whatever happened, things ain't going right, and you're a 60. Silly things, you're a 60. Maybe more serious things, stuff happening with mom and dad, things are going on at the house, it's chaotic, and you're not a hundred percent, you're just a 60. If we believed and tried to fight for the myth of perfection, we would say, if I'm not 10 out of 10, then, my F, then what I'm doing today doesn't matter. If I don't set a PR today, then today is worthless. That's the myth of perfection. You're not going to be 10 out of 10, 10 days out of 10. Some days you could be a 60. What excellence says is that on that day that you're a 60, you're going to give 100% of your 60. You give 100% of what you have in that moment. If all you got is 60, you give 100% of that. If you, when you got a 90, you give 100% of that. When you're 100, you give 100% of that. Whatever you have, you give the fullness of yourself to it. And nobody can make that judgment for you but you. You can put up a, you can put up a, a look, make people think like you're like some of you do when you're doing conditioning. You look like you're humping it, but really you're trying to like, I'm gonna save a little back. Look, I'm alignment. I get how that I get how that works. All right. Give all that you got in every area that you are. When there's alignment with your actions, and your goals, and your integrity, you begin to live in excellence. And I want you to understand excellence is contagious. All right? It has a way of rubbing off on others. It has a way of people picking up going, hey, man, I see the way that you're working. What's your name? Bodhi? I see the way Bodhi worked, man. He's out here getting it. And his example, his excellence becomes an encouragement to me. Because I go, if Bodhi can do it, then I can do it. And so then I start working harder because of what I saw in him. But you've got to understand the opposite is also true. That way, if Bodhi, I know he would never would. But if he came in and he, he was phoning it in, well, well, hey, man, Bodhi ain't giving very much. He ain't paying attention. So I don't have to either. Right? It's contagious like that. And when you become the kind of person who learns excellence here, but then says, you know what, if excellence on the baseball field makes me better at baseball, I bet excellence in the classroom might make me better in the classroom. Hello. Let's start putting letters and shapes and emojis and math equations. But X equals negative B plus or minus the square root. Hey. Y'all remember? Y'all, y'all maybe not. But we say, you know what, if excellence makes me better on the field, then you know, maybe if I'm excellent in my study habits, in the way I take notes, in the way I pay attention, in my body, in the classroom, maybe it'll change what happens in the classroom. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand how many of you struggle in the classroom, but I'm willing to bet, I'd bet good money, that if you are struggling in the classroom, it's not because you're stupid. Because you learn some complicated stuff out here that you're struggling because you don't want to. Because you don't give excellence there. You think I can be excellent here, and then I'd be five star out here, and I could be no star in the classroom because I ain't gotta, I ain't gotta do math equations to play baseball. I just gotta know how to sign the check. Understand? You can't compartmentalize it. The reps you get here, bring them to the classroom. Bring your excellence to the classroom that you might learn how to learn then you become unstoppable. And if you can get it on the field, you get in the classroom, you can get in the hallway in the way that you interact with people. And you bring excellence to the hallway, then you bring it to the house. Then you be excellent at the house. And all of a sudden, excellence has permeated everywhere you go. Simple choice. Difficult to do, simple to choose. All right. That's excellence everywhere. Relentless effort. 
the sense that I got a motor in me and I'm driven to show up and bring the juice about me, the want to about me. Don't you know the greatest coaches in the world can't coach want to? Can't coach want to for you. You don't have something in here that says I'm playing for something that drives me past conditioning, drives me past having to make up homework, drives me past the, the sacrifice in the weight room, drives me past the extra practices. If you don't have something in here, it's going to be difficult. And it may be a result on the field. But I found that the, the best motors have nothing to do with the sport. The best motors have to do with you. That you would step up and you say, you know what, I want to play in such a way that honors my faith. I want to play in such a way that honors my family. I want to play in such a way that I'm proud of who I am and how I did it. I'm playing for something bigger than just a scoreboard because the scoreboard gets played after a little while. Like winning gets boring after a little while. Getting another hit, that gets tired after a little while. We're playing for something bigger than self, a higher purpose. That never gets tired. That never gets old. It allows you to bring that juice wherever you thing that I found that drives the motor for me more than anything is gratitude. That when I am genuinely, fully, and wholeheartedly thankful for where I am and what I'm doing, I can't help but have the juice. But when I am ungrateful to be where I am, well, I'm dragging my feet, talking about I don't want to be here. So here's this phrase I use, and if you know me, you see me, I'll, he I'll use it all the time. It's this phrase, glad to be here. Somebody say, hey, man, how you doing? I'm glad to be here. And it's just a simple choice that I'm making, telling myself, I'm glad to be in this place, an intentional decision. Get to the classroom. Y'all, I'm working on a doctorate right now. Ain't no joke. You can't just fluff your way through a doctorate, showing up, hey, I'm glad to be here. Man, not, not 10 minutes ago, I wasn't. Not when I'm writing that paper, I wasn't. Right? Working on a manuscript for book number two, sitting on that screen, typing. I don't want to be, you know what? I'm glad to be here. It changes it. Time for conditioning. Glad to be here. Time for some ridiculously good-looking bearded half black man to yell at me after I've been on the field for 10 hours today. Glad to be here. It changes. Because you see, when you are grateful, you realize that what you have, you don't have to have. I don't have to have this opportunity to be here with you. You don't have to have this opportunity to be sitting in these stands, in this beautiful place, with people who are investing and caring. You're not entitled to that. It's a gift. You don't have to get to play baseball. You don't have to have that job. It's a gift. When you realize that, all of a sudden, it turns a motor inside you, right? As a side note, let me tell you, as one who's lost his, both his parents in the last year, don't take for granted. Don't take for granted what mom and dad are doing for you when they're here. Being here, traveling across the country, some of you, man, from the coast, all around, don't take for granted what mom and dad are doing. Right? Be thankful. Hug your necks. Hug your mama's neck tonight. Right. Hug your mama's neck. <laughs> hey, when your daddy tries to give you a kiss, don't push it away. All right? You're still his little boy. I know you're big and bad and all this. Don't push it away. His life is short. Almost one year ago to the day, I buried my mom. Priest your funeral. Two months, five days later, I buried my dad. Priest your funeral too. Life is short. Be thankful for your family. Be thankful for what you're given. And you find a motor, a drive that'll push you through any difficult times. Tough people win. Integrity over everything. Growth follows belief. Excellence everywhere. Relentless effort. And finally, service before self. Understand this, fellas. You'll never lose helping other people win. No, we live in a world driven by competition and rankings and ratings and scores, but understand you never lose helping other people win. You start competing with somebody. What's your name? Javi. Javi. You start competing with Javi. All right. Hey, man, Javi, I'm going to compete with you, not to beat you, not because I need to be better than you. I'm going to compete with you because I want my best to get better, because I want your best to get better. So I'm going to give you my best, Javi, to make your best better. And then Javi turns around and he gives me his best and that makes my best better. And we make each other's best better and together we become our best. I start competing. That's what happens when you serve your teammates. Right? When you take time to serve other people. When you give and you give in any way that you can. 
your best attention, your best eye contact, your best competition, your best feedback. When you give the best of what you have to somebody, you serve them. And you never lose when you do that. You never lose helping other people. Where's, where's, uh, where's uh, Rangel? Trey Rangel, where you at? This man don't even know this right here. His dad was one of my high school coaches. You don't even know you see his face right now. I say, what? His dad was my coach my freshman year of high school. You know, I live like 25 minutes out of town. And I really didn't have no business playing baseball, man. Like, I was, I was, I was like one of those guys. I was a good enough athlete and a good enough leader that I, I, I kind of had that Tim Tebow thing going on. Like, hey, we kind of want you in the locker room, but, like, we also know, like, you ain't really got the skills to be in the locker room. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, and so uh, I remember one time he drove 30 minutes out to pick me up. Not because I was going to make his team better. Because he knew his team would make me better. He was serving. He was just there. And that's 25, 20 plus years ago. All right? I don't even call him. He called me a meathead. If you graduate, he gra- graduate to be called a bullet head. Right? And that was his dad, man. And it, and it just it, it changed me. Right? And you have the chance to do that with your teammates. You have the chance to do that with Ricky at the QT gas station. When you go in and you give him some respect and call his name and give your best attention to him. You never lose helping other people win. And that mindset is your mindset. That's service before self. It fights entitlement. It fights that selfishness. It fights that sense of I'm better than you-ness. And it puts you in a position to deploy what you're given in service of others rather than exploit it in service of yourself. Right? The more you give, the more you receive, I guarantee you. Tough people win. Integrity over everything. Growth follows belief. Excellence everywhere. Relentless effort in service before self. Fellas, I've been with teams across the country. These principles, these pillars are true in championship programs because they're true of championship people. Championship people win championships. And so with all the encouragement and all the coaching that you're getting, as hard as you're going to work in what you do there, my challenge for you is work even harder on these six things. Work even harder on your character. And if you will, you'll find success in the game of sports Fellas, my, my, what we have for you moving forward, a couple things. If you're into reading books, uh, my first book, hit the Wall Street Journal bestseller, debuted there, uh, called The Locker Room, How Great Teams Heal Hurt, Overcome Adversity, and Build Unity. It's a short teaching story about the six pillars. So if you want to know, hey, what, is, what do the six pillars look like in action, hop on Amazon, The Locker Room book uh, by Stephen Mackey and Damon West, and it's a short teaching story about what that looks like. Second thing I got for you. Wednesday night, this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time, uh, Brian and the team at Future Stars are going to send out a Zoom link. And on Wednesday night, I'm going to do a one-hour Zoom to dive deeper in on what we talked about um, tonight. And so if you want to dive in on a more intimate, there's usually five, ten guys on. And if you want to dive in on building character and leadership and what that looks like in process, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock Central Uh, free of charge uh, this week, we'll be there. And then following, beginning in November, we'll do the first uh, one night, the first week of each month, I'll do a one hour call, much like this, uh, but we'll have opportunity to interact. And so if you want some support and encouragement, uh, then once a month, we'll have that available for you via via Zoom. In addition to those Zooms, uh, each with each lesson, I'm gonna give you four uh, weekly assignments, a seven, 10 minute video lesson, uh, that talks about and builds upon what we talk about in the Zoom so that you have a short, four shorter encouragements, one for each week in between our Zoom calls with some worksheets for you to dive in deeper to help develop and build that character and leadership in you. Fellas, I'm proud of you. Proud of you for being here. Proud of the work that you've done. I believe in you. Believe not just in the baseball player that you can become, but in the young man you can become. Believe in what you can learn through the game of baseball that sets you up to be successful in the game of life. When you get on the field tomorrow, play hard not to impress. Play hard because you're worth it. Bounce back not because you need to right some wrongs. Bounce back because you're worth it. Because you are. And by the way, end of the day, just have some stinking fun. Because it's fun to play the game. It's fun to play baseball. If you're playing in the
in a place, quote, national champions, in a place like this. Y'all got friends that were in school yesterday. Y'all out here playing baseball. Come on, man. That's a gift. Remember gratitude that fuels the motor. Hey, proud of y'all. Y'all have a great night. Uh, I think uh, Brian and then maybe have some instructions on uh,